it's my great uh, pleasure to introduce uh, our next speaker, which is uh, Dr. Deep uh, Gurol. So uh, Dr. Gurol is an associate professor of neurology at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard University. His main research focus is on the prevention of stroke and cognitive dysfunction in patients with brain cerebral small vessel disease who have underlying atrial fibrillation. Dr. Gurol is the founding chair of the WSO Cerebral Small Vessel Disease and Vascular Cognitive Impairment Task Force. And uh, we're looking forward to his presentation on the clinical perspectives of lacunar ischemic stroke. So Adip, thank you so much for accepting the invitation and looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, so if you guys cannot hear me, uh, please let me know. But uh, I'm very pleased to be part of this uh, ESO program. Uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, I'm going to try to do a relatively quick overview of the um, uh, physiopathology, uh, clinical characteristics, and treatment approaches uh, for patients like with ischemic lacunar uh, strokes. So the term lacun was adopted in 1800s to describe infarctions from several small vessels, uh, but their underlying pathophysiological basis remained obscure until the 1960s. And Charlie Miller Fisher performed several top studies of stroke patients. Uh, <laughs> So the very important thing here is that um, uh, Charlie Miller Fisher observed that the vessels displayed segmental arteriolar disorganization uh, that was associated with, with vessel enlargement, hemorrhage, and fibrinoid deposition. So uh, uh, the uh, what he is seeing in these small vessels, it was a, a real uh, significant disorganization. Uh, and he coined the term uh, lipohialnosis to describe the microvascular mechanism that uh, and uh, uh, that gives uh, the small subcortical infarcts. Um, and the, um, uh, 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 the, the, the progression of the pathology can be summarized as risk factors, especially hypertension and diabetes, as also aging, vascular amyloid, and the other uh, uh, known factors such as oxidative stress, mechanical stress, and predisposition uh, to vessel dysfunction. Uh, to uh, starting of the vessel pathology, and then uh, the uh, parenchymal pathology uh, uh, consists of uh, lacunar infarcts, and uh, certainly small vessel disease cause other ischemic and hemorrhagic lesions that you will also uh, review. Uh, lacunar syndromes are summarized here. Uh, pretty much all stroke neurologists are familiar with that. Uh, and they consist of the uh, pure motor hemiparesis, uh, pure sensory stroke, ataxic uh, hemiparesis, uh, 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 sensory motor uh, 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 syndrome, and dysarthria eclampsia syndrome. Sorry, that uh, dysarthria eclampsia syndrome was written twice here. Uh, the uh, fifth one is uh, obviously uh, uh, sensory motor strokes. Uh, there should be no cortical symptom or sign uh, in order to call it a, a lacunar uh, syndrome. This is how these uh, lacunes look like on uh, MR imaging in the acute phase. Uh, DWI bright, ADC dark, and they can show up on flare as a uh, hyper intense uh, small region. Uh, they are typically between 3 to 15 millimeters in size. Uh, and we are going to discuss this uh, a little bit more. And this is the, these are the stripe criteria for lacunes from Dr. Uh, Warlow's work. Uh, the uh, appearance of a uh, 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 chronic cavitated lacunar infarct is nicely presented here in this picture. As you can see, there is a, a hypo intense uh, uh, cavitated core surrounded by uh, hyperintense rim uh, on flare. And this is the hallmark of the uh, lacunar infarct uh, on uh, uh, MRI in the uh, 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 chronic phase. There are different classifications, uh, toast uh, criteria, which was the first kind of evidence-based criteria for ischemic stroke etiology. Uh, uh, causative classification of stroke is another one, and there are others. Uh, in general, uh, uh, in order to call it a lacunar uh, infarct or small vessel disease-related lacunar infarct, 
the patient should present with a, a lapinar syndrome and uh, the, on CT or MRI, a, a deep uh, seated uh, lacune uh, less than 15 millimeters in most classification and schemes need to be seen. Uh, but uh, even if you do not see any infarct, if the patient presented with a uh, lacunar syndrome that affects the face, arm, and leg uh, similarly without cortical symptoms, uh, it can still be called as a, a lacunar stroke. Um, uh, so the, uh, two, there are two main uh, etiologies for uh, small vessel disease in older adults. Uh, when it's hypertensive, uh, small vessel disease some also call it a perforator disease, although uh, this can also happen in more superficial vessels. Uh, so, and uh, the, uh, uh, typically uh, these are diagnosed on imaging uh, uh, using the location of the infarcts and uh, her her uh, hemorrhages. So deep hemorrhages and deep microbes are typically associated with uh, hypertensive small vessel disease. Uh, superficial hemorrhages and superficial microbes are typically associated with cerebral immunity in jeopardy in people over 50 to 55 years of age. <laughs> uh, in these uh, uh, patient populations, uh, lacunes were frequent. Uh, uh, about 25% uh, uh, of uh, intercerebral hemorrhage patients did at least one lacune. Uh, and uh, the, uh, but uh, in addition to the deep classical uh, lacunes, uh, more, more commonly, much more commonly seen in hypertensive small vessel disease patients, the lobar lacunes were also uh, uh, seen. Uh, uh, these are subcortical uh, lacunes having the same uh, 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 radiologic uh, features, the cavitated core and the, the surrounding hyperintense rim. Uh, and this one was, uh, uh, confirmed again uh, in a, a study from a Taiwanese uh, 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 patient cohort with intracerebral hemorrhages. Uh, and these uh, lobar lacunes were associated with a higher amyloid load, again, supporting cerebral limit and jeopardy hypothesis. And this other study again confirmed that uh, about 25% of uh, patients with cerebral limit and jeopardy do have lobar lacunes. And the presence of lobar lacunes was also associated with the presence of uh, the cortical microinfarcts. Again, supporting the view that these two are emanating from the same thing, the same small vessel disease, which is cerebral immunity in jeopardy in this case. And the presence of lacunes was associated in those CA patients, presence of lacunes was associated with a much higher uh, recurrent intercerebral hemorrhage risk. Uh, Small vessel diseases uh, cause vascular dysfunction uh, in addition to these uh, lacunary infarcts. And vascular dysfunction in turn causes white blood hyperintensities and, um, uh, 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 and uh, uh, cortical atrophy and subcortical atrophy. Uh, we, we do have very good quality studies and uh, these results have been reproduced in multiple different cohorts. And uh, uh, again, cerebral immunity in jeopardy and hypertensive small vessel disease, both of them result into uh, white blood hyperintensities um, uh, uh, and cortical atrophy as well. Uh, there is a, a, a spectrum of other uh, uh, imaging markers uh, that are associated with those uh, small vessel diseases. And large perivascular spaces in Centrum Simaya Wally are associated with CAA. There is enlarged perivascular spaces in uh, basal ganglia are uh, in uh, related to hypertensive small vessel disease. Cortical superficial siderosis is a very important marker of cerebral immunity in jeopardy, and uh, microbleeds uh, certainly are found in both uh, hypertensive small vessel disease and cerebral immunity in jeopardy, as uh, so it's just cerebral hemorrhages. So. Uh, these small vessel diseases cause intracerebral hemorrhages, microbes, superficial cystic white blood disease, and brain atrophy. Uh, but also through vessel occlusion, they can cause microinfarcts and lacunar infarcts. Uh, all of these pathologies cause either direct damage to critical structures or uh, they, they disrupt the global uh, network, uh, both structurally and functionally. Therefore, they result to impairments in cognition, gain, and other motor functions. So, although outside of the uh, focal neurological deficits that they cause, they, they do result in uh, cognitive and uh, gait problems. Um, as to the treatment, 
uh, IVTPA has been used in people with lacunar stroke in NANDS's landmark trial. Uh, there was uh, 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 some benefit from IVTPA, but in uh, IFP3 trial, there was no significant uh, benefit from uh, using uh, uh, thrombolysis in uh, uh, people with acute lacunar infarcts. When it comes to antiplatelet treatment, uh, antiplatelet monotherapy is indicated. Uh, the uh, SPS3 trial, uh, sorry that uh, the slide saved mood when, when they were adopted, uh, but uh, so the SPS3 trial was the only trial uh, that uh, uh, reviewed the uh, potential benefits of dual antiplatelets over antiplatelet monotherapy in a patient population with lacunar uh, strokes. Uh, it didn't show any uh, benefit uh, uh, from dual intact platelets. So we have a, a specific category here, like in infarcts, they do not typically benefit from anticoagulants for dual intact platelets uh, or like uh, uh, triple therapy. Uh, but uh, all of the rest, uh, uh, anti platelet monotherapy has been fine. IV TPA has been used uh, and uh, uh, it, might, it might benefit the, these patients in the hyperacute phase. Uh, of course, blood pressure control, glycemic control are important. And that's the appendage closure is safe if such patients have uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, to me, one very important advance, and there are only like two more slides left. Uh, the um, one very important uh, study is again from Dr. Warlow, and uh, she and her uh, colleagues uh, uh, are now really focusing on vascular dysfunction instead of escalating the anti-thrombotic management in these patients. And like focusing on uh, vascular dysfunction is really, really important. You know, to that end, they have uh, used a, uh, a, a, a two by two factorial design study uh, to uh, uh, for an initial uh, overview of uh, 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 the effects of isosorbic mononitrate and silosazole in people with uh, lacunar infarcts. And isorbic mononitrate reduced recurrent stroke and cognitive impairment. Silos has already reduced dependence and the combination reduced the composite uh, and uh, dependence and any cognitive uh, uh, impairments. So uh, to me, this hopefully will be the future of uh, management or treatment of people with lacunar uh, infarcts, uh, which also means uh, 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 patients with uh, several small vessel diseases is escalating uh, antiplatelets uh, or anti-thrombotic uh, drugs uh, are really not, uh, so this approach is not helping these patients. We really need to focus on vascular dysfunction and uh, other aspects uh, in order to benefit this uh, uh, patient category. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'll be happy to take questions at the end. Thank you very much, Edith, for this very comprehensive presentation.